the session is going to start soon i'm waiting for you people to join I will wait for next two minutes and then I'm going to start. And I hope today I'm audible. The one who has joined me should inform that I'm audible. We are going to start soon, within one minute. And I hope that the last list class which I have taken with you, and the last lesson, I wish that, okay, fine, let us revise what we have done in our previous class. And then we will proceed. Meanwhile, the one who wish to join, he will join. So in the last class, we have discussed that the student friends he was unwilling to go to school because he was late he has not learned his lesson on participant and he was scolded and was in the fear of scolding by his teacher and he has some other plans the plan was to spend his day out not to go to school that day because it was warm and bright day the birds were chipping he wished to listen to them or he wished to see the Prussian soldiers drilling uh, in the field but he simply took hold of all his feelings and then he went to school somebody has commented okay good so i'm revising because many of you have not yet joined so just for quick revision and then we will start with the today's discussion and I request all of you, please don't write, don't write your name and your school. Your name is visible, but don't mention your school. So fine, uh, after the first paragraph, which we have discussed, yeah, okay, fine. So the next important, the paragraph deals with the scene at the town hall. The scene the, at the town hall that was, there was a huge crowd. Where, why? Because there was a bulletin board which gives the information, the news to the people. And that day there was some news, that's why there was a crowd. Anyway, uh, friends didn't wish to go near the notice board, near the bulletin board. And he was hurrying to his school when he was mocked by Watcher, who was a blacksmith. And in an ironical ma manner, he said to him, don't go so fast, Bob, you will get to your school in plenty of time this is an ironical statement we have already learned because that day was the last day for the friend teaching and learning when he went to school the school was unusual day unusual that day usually there was a lot of noise at the school uh, people can hear the opening and closing of the decks and the lessons were repeated in unison very loudly and you can also hear the ruler of MML rapping on the table. But that day it was calm like Sunday morning. Not only is it calm like Sunday morning, but that day MML was not hung angry at him for coming late. He was patient. Not only this, he saw that MML was wearing a special dress, his beautiful green coat, his frilled shirt, and embroidered black silk hat, caps. Fine. So this was the special dress which he used to wear on very special days like inspection on prize days only. Not only this change, there was one more change that he could see that the bank, back seats, back benches, which usually remain empty, that day the old people from the village were sitting. Okay, And the hoser, he was wearing the three-cornered hat, 
the mayor and postmaster and the hoser he has brought his old primer writing wood say which was thumbed at the edges which was worn out at the edges because of use and then hamel started his lesson after that and then uh, friends come to know that that was the last day of french teaching in the school that day because the order from berlin has come because these two districts alsace and lorraine they have fall into the hands of germany uh, the prussian uh, army so the order was that there will be no french teaching from the next day will happen from the next day only german will be taught in these two french districts knowing this these words were like thunder clap a great surprise for a great shock for france and on knowing that he won't be able to learn french anymore his feelings towards his books and m hamel changed first of all he was sorry for not taking his ser lessons seriously wasting in his time in seeking birds eggs or going sliding on sar then his attitude towards his books changed the books which earlier appeared to be a nuisance and heavy to carry for him his grammar book his history book now they appear to be an old friend in him okay and he didn't wish to give them up third change that he was though he didn't like m hamel because she were he was very cranky and very strict teacher but the the idea that he is going away and he won't be able to see him again he was not liking it and he that, that particular idea made him forget all about his ruler and his cranky nature this question dear i told you that all which the, the points which i am discussing with you, with you are very important for our exam even this question is very important why the villagers were sitting at the back seat or why they were occupying the back seats in the school so the reasons were that uh, number 1 they were sorry like friends for not learning their lessons for not learning french seriously number 2 they were thanking their master for his 40 years of faithful service it means that hamel has given 40 years of his faithful service this school and number 3 they were showing respect for the country that was theirs no more so for these three reason very clearly just keep in your head why the these uh, villagers were sitting at the back seats for the three reasons number 1 they were sorry number 2 they were thanking the master for his 40 years of faithful service and number 3 they were showing the respect for the country that was no more longer their own after this uh, when uh, friends were unable to read then m hamel starts discussing reflecting that why french people have uh, have not learned french till date so he kept on who uh, thinking who are responsible for not learning french so number 1 he Uh, held the students responsible he says friends but not only friends friends here is a representative of all the students or all, all those people who have not learned french why because this was the habit of uh, students and also those who are in learning mode that they simply keep on shifting things till the next day postponing th things till the next day and now there is no next day there is no tomorrow okay so he saying something please don't write your uh, class and your school please i am requesting you again and again anyways now let us come back so yes so first the first person whom he held responsible for not learning french they it's actually he he held students responsible for not learning french because they kept on postponing things till the next day number 
he held parents responsible for not learning french why because they preferred their children to work on farm or at mills for extra money and they never cared to send their children to school and number 3 he blamed himself himself as a teacher means he was the like franz was representative of students similarly he is responsible for teachers this representative of teachers okay so uh, m hamel is here is representative of teachers like franz is representative of students so he blames teachers himself as a teacher why because he has engaged his students in his personal course and making them miss their lessons how because he sent them water his flowers instead of learning their lessons and number 2 he always he has also given a holiday to the students whenever he wished to have a holiday like for example when he wished to go fishing he gave them a holiday this question dear children is very very important whom did he held responsible for not learning french that's why i have repeated the whole discussion okay now let's proceed okay so then from one thing to another m hamel went now again sorry i'm reading the paragraph then the discussion will happen because we have done already the we are done with the revision we are already done with the revision now see Uh, then from one thing to another mem am hamel went on to talk of the french language saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to the language it it is as if they had the key to their prison then he opened the grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood it all he said seemed so easy so easy i think too that i had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke so let's come back so uh, after this uh, reflection that who is responsible for not learning french m hamel started talking about the beautiful beauty of french language he calls his language the most beautiful language and the most logical the clearest okay forget about the other thing which have been discussed here uh, i want you to comment in the comment box what do you think what does it mean the most rest or superlative degrees what does superlative means superlative means the last level nothing is superior than that so think over it i'm going to proceed i'm going to discuss one point and then we will come to the superlative degrees used here and he says we must guard it us and never forget it uh, up till here only so he he advise all the people to protect their language to save to keep their language safe and not to forget their english why the reason is given up uh, later on so let us first of all discuss why that why i am pointing out these superlative degrees the most beautiful the clearest the most logical dear children i have discussed with you when when we were discussing about the learning outcomes what you're going to learn from this lesson one of the learning objective was linguistic chauvinism forget linguistic linguistic is something to do with language chauvinism we we are going to discuss chauvinism my dear children are actually is actually 
to understand in the easiest term is superiority complex. What is superiority complex? When you think you are the best, nothing is comparable to you. Nothing can stand in front of you. You are the most superior one. Okay, and linguistic chauvinism means when you, uh, you when you feel that your language is the best. Okay, so here in this chapter, in the story which we are learning, Germans were suffering from linguistic chauvinism. Why? That was the reason that they imposed their language on French people when they took the chance because they got the power to do that. Okay. But when we see the dialogue of M. Hamel, the most beautiful, the clearest, the most logical, all these superlative degrees, number one, he is using all these superlative degrees to show his patriotism, patriotism and also the love for his language. But at the same time, not clearly, but uh, under the main current, you can say something hidden. In hidden form, he also has this shamanism. He also thinks that his language is the superior, is the most superior of all. Otherwise, he would have not used this superlative degree, the most, est. Okay. So, uh, may possible that if French have defeated Germans and they have got the power over Germans, may possible that they would have done the same thing. I hope my point is clear to you. But here you want you can't say this point because here the language German is imposed by the Germans on French. I know I think believe that you must be knowing the difference between the German and German. Okay. When we say German, German means language. And when we say the German, that means people. When we say the French, it means French people. When we say French, it means French language. When we add uh, an article to these words, then it means people. So uh, linguistic chauvinism, who is suffering from linguistic chauvinism? Uh, French were, uh, sorry, Germans were suffering from French, uh, from linguistic chauvinism because they have imposed their language on French people, vice versa, if French would have been in the powerful position, may possible, maybe, it's not sure because we don't know, may, they may have also have done the same because they are full of all superlative degrees for their language. At one, at one hand, it shows their patriotism, love for their country, but at the same time, it also shows the chauvinism. Okay, now let's move. Now, next statement said by M. Hamel, that's very, very important. What's that? He said that you should guard your language and never forget your language. Why? Because when our people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to the language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. Very, very important phrase. How could be the language key to prison? Dear children, language is not only a medium of communication, it is also your identity, your culture. The culture of a particular place, area is reflected by the language they speak. Are you getting? And also, uh, the, the speaker of same language, they are united together. You know it? So, language is not only, number one, a medium of communication. Number two, it is the identity. Number three, it is culture. And number four, it is source of unity. So, if you hold your language, then nobody can prison you, keep you in prison for a long time. And that's why it is the key to prison. Why? Because language is not only the medium of communication, it is the identity, 
it is the culture it is it is a medium a source to keep you united to keep people united those who are speaking the same language so it is key to prison right because once you are united you can anytime uh, unlock the locks of prison okay so language is the key to prison uh, I would like for your knowledge, dear children, though it is not here, uh, I, but I feel like to discuss with you. Dear children, there are three types of slaveries. Number one is your political slavery, which you know very well, in which the outer forces come and enslave a country politically. Okay. Second type of slavery is your economic slavery, when uh, the full economy of a country is under the control of some outside forces like like the britishers have done with us they have actually taken the hold of our economy and then they made the political kings kings those who are the you know the political leaders at that time the puppets in their hands are you getting so this is very dangerous slavery economic one and the third and the last and slavery is your cultural slavery. Do you know, dear children? You can easily, not very easily, but you can easily overcome the impact of political and economic slavery. But cultural slavery goes for ages. The impact goes for ages, you know. I think you can better understand the condition of India these days. We have been ruled by Britishers for over 200 years, and you can see the result. We are independent now for so many years, and still we have the impact of that cultural slavery. Anyways, some other day we may discuss if we get a time. So uh, I hope my point is clear. Uh, Am Hamel calls his language the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest, the most logical. It shows his love for his country and love for his language. But at the same time, it also reflects that he feels that his language is the best of all. Same as Germans, because Germans also have the same feeling, linguistic chauvinism, and that's why they impose their language on French people. And the second phrase is very important. He says that the language is key to prison. Why? Because I discussed already with you, Language is not only the medium of communication, it is also, made, it is also uh, the identity of the people. It is all the culture, of, reflects the culture of the people and also keep them united. Okay, so anytime if the people are united and they keep their identity uh, to them, they can easily open its key. They can easily get freedom anytime. Okay, stop here. This point is clear. I'm not going to discuss it again. Next. He opened the grammar and read us our lesson. After that, what he did? He opened the grammar book. Dear children, I, I wish to show you that what's very important because what, how he took his lesson is also very, very important. Okay. So first of all, he taught them grammar. He read the grammar lesson to them. And then I was amazed to see how well I understood it. Who is I here? Uh, please write in your comment box. Franz, Franz is I. Franz was amazed to see how well he understood it. What the lesson on grammar. All he seemed so easy, so easy. I think too that I had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience dear children i think you must have all experienced in your classrooms you understand better things become easier for you when you listen carefully that day lesson grammar lesson was there also. that day grammar lesson was there same teacher was teaching same student was studying but that day it was easy why because the student was listening carefully 
not only student was listening it carefully but also the teacher was explaining everything with patience are you getting so both sides are important the teacher's side as well as the student's side so if the teacher is patient he teaches nicely and if the students are patient they listen carefully so when these two things happen teachers are teacher is patient and students are listening carefully learning happens okay so that day he has listened carefully who friends and m hamel has taught comparatively with much patience and that made the lesson easy that day okay so let's move forward it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted who is this poor man m hamel the teacher he wished to give all of his students everything at one stroke what is at one stroke all together everything at one time because why because there was no other class from the next day okay so he wished to put everything in the head of the student in one go why because he has no other option left okay so after grammar we had learning i would like to show you i was trying to so which lesson he has taken first grammar and after grammar he has taken writing okay so after grammar he has taken writing okay i'm going of oh, sorry i'm going to reread this paragraph first of all and if you have any difficulty you may uh, write your problem or the confusion in the uh, comment box so that i may deal with it then from one and now when i'm reading you must pay attention if the things are clear to you very good if the things are not clear to you please let me know then from one thing to another m hamel went on to talk of the french language saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood it all he said seemed so easy so easy i think too that i had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience it seemed most or it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our head at one stroke fine let's move forward after the grammar we had lesson in writing they oh, i'm reading that day m hamel had new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand france alsace france alsace they looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school room hung from the road at the top of our desk you ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how cool it was the only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them not even the little littlest one who walked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was french too on the roof the pigeons cooed very low and i thought to myself will they make them sing in german even the pigeons so uh, this i told you that just have in your head the uh, this notes that how he took all his lessons so first of all he started his class with uh, grammar and then he took uh, sorry first of all he has taught reading okay when he made uh, friends read and when uh, friends couldn't read then he so first lesson was reading okay 
and then when Franz couldn't read, then he reflected on uh, the who's responsible. Then there was a grammar lesson. He taught very patiently, and Franz listened very uh, attentively in writing. Now let us discuss what happened in writing. So in writing, he has made separate, different, beautiful, handwritten copies for everyone. And everybody was writing. Nobody was paying attention to anything. And what could be heard? Only the, only the sound of scratching of the pens over the paper. This was only could be heard. Everybody was working very sincerely. And what happened once a beetle flew in, you know? It's suppose, uh, I have also experienced that when I am taking, it was, uh, uh, I'm taking glass in any of the section and suppose some wasp come in or some or some lizard creeps into the glass maybe sometime uh, in the rainy season then everybody gets busy in looking th at those wasps and those lizards and all and they miss their lesson but that day when even when beetles flew in nobody paid attention to them not even the little one you must know that little children, they don't write the alphabets. They write some uh, trace work. They do some tracing work. But they too were doing it with, very sincerely as if they are learning French. Okay. So this was the writing function. Uh, writing session taken by uh, M. Hebel. Now this line is very, very important. Then what happened? On the roof, pigeons cooed very low. Cooed, they were speaking very low. Pigeon cooed, okay? Then I thought to myself, friends thought, what will they make them in singing Germans? Even the pigeons? Very, very important line. Why? Do you think it is possible to make the birds, the animals to speak a particular language with human beings speak? Forget about the parrots. No, it's not possible. What does it show? It shows that power could be exercised over human beings only. Germans, they have invaded the German, the German, they have invaded the French district and imposed their language German on them. But they cannot impose German on pigeons. Pigeons are birds, the natural objects. Okay? So they cannot force these natural things to speak the language which the language which they think is superior to be imposed on others. Okay, so that's why this line is very, very important. I have attached uh, this uh, file, the explanation of lines to ponder, the, all the allegories and all the uh, important points attached here. I know there was earlier there was no access to it, but now I have given access to you. Okay, so you may click. And you may easily look for it, okay? Wherever you need. Everywhere I have given you the here. The access to you. Now you can click and get the access to these files. Okay. So will they make them sing in German? Even the pages. I am again reading this paragraph. If there is any difficulty, you may ask me. After the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. That day, MML had new copies for us. Written in a beautiful round hand, Franz Assas, Franz Assas. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the room, schoolroom, hung from the road at the top of our desk. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was. The only sound was scratching of the pens over the paper. Once some beetles flew in, but nobody paid any attention to them not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was true. on the roof or the pigeons scooch very low and i thought to myself will they make them sing in german even the pigeons i hope explanation is clear to you 
let's move forward whenever i looked whenever i looked up from my writing i saw m hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first in one thing then at another as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room fancy for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him just like that only the decks and benches had been worn smooth the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the whole vine that he had planted himself twined about the windows to the roof how it must have broken his heart to leave it all poor man to hear his sister going about in the room above packing trunks for they must leave the country next day dear children here the personality of m hamel has been reflected wonderfully how m hamel was doing justice to his last lesson but emotionally he was broken why was he broken number 1 he has to leave the work which he was doing for last 40 years number 2 he has not only to stop teaching french he has to leave the country also you know germans the german people they not only imposed their language on french people but they also made a rule that no teacher of french will remain in the country so that nobody could learn french language anymore okay so how painful was it why he has lived when you live at a place then you are attached to that place when you were friends was looking at hamel at m hamel when he was writing he was seeing him sitting motionless without any motion in his chair and he was gazing one thing then another then another as if he wished to fix the image of all those things in his mind why because he has lived at that place for 40 years with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him 40 years not one year two year one month two month one day or 40 days no it was 40 years long time everything was same except the decks and benches have worn smooth because of the use the walnut tree in the garden everything whatever have been explained here and then his heart was broken with his broken heart he was listening hearing his sister who was moving the things in the room while she was packing their trunk upstairs on the floor above the classroom why because they have to the country the next day very much torturous and that's why he was willing to give everything to the french people whatever he could give them again i am reading pay attention whenever i looked up from my writing i saw am hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing then at another as if he wanted to fix in his mind just now how everything looked in that little school room fancy for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him just like that only the decks and benches had been worn smooth the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hope vine that he he had planted himself twined above about the windows to the roof how it must have broken his heart to leave it all 
poor man, to hear his sister moving about in the room above, packing their trunks, for they must leave the country next day. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to very last. See how strong was he. Though he was emotionally broken, his heart was broken. He was sad, but still he was listening to every listen till the end. He was doing justice. After the writing, we had listen in history. And then the babes chanted their da be, what are these? Ba, be, be, bu, bo. These are the French letters down there at the back of the room all Hauser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands, smelled the letter with them. You could see that he too was crying. His voice trembled with emotions that it was so funny to hear him that he, we all wanted to laugh and cry. Ah, how well I remember it, the last lesson. So after history, after writing, what happened? Reading, grammar, writing, history, then the history, okay? And then the recitation of the letters of French and the Hauser, Hauser who was holding the primer in his hand, he was crying and spelling, uh, sorry, uh, also speaking those letters. Then repeating those letters, then what happened? The sound produced by him was so funny that everybody wished to laugh at the funny sound, funny sound, and also cry, mixed emotions. Now, we are moving to the end of this story. All at once, the church clock struck 12. Then the angelus, at the same moment, the triumphant of the Prussian returning from drill, sounded under our windows. M. Hamel stood up very pale in his chair. I never saw him so tall. So it was 12 o'clock, time for school to get over. There were trumpets of Prussian soldiers returning from their drill. M. Hamel stood up, very pale. Pale means, pale is yellow, but it is not the positive yellow. It is something like ill feelings. When somebody is ill and that uh, that skin color turns pale when we say pale it means that some uh, yellow color because of illness so he looked pale in his chair and i never saw him so tall this is very important tall tall do you think that m hamel all of a sudden grew tall in height no it has nothing to do with height tall here means in his stature his personality he was a great teacher, though toned up at his personal life, personal front. Emotionally, he was toned up, but still, but still, he took his last lesson with utmost sincerity and whatever he could do on the last lesson. With, uh, do, he has done, done the justice with his last lesson. So it shows his personality. Tall hair doesn't mean the physically tall. Tall hair means his nature, his stature was tall. Okay. And then what happened? Then said he, I, I, but something choked him. He could not go on. Then he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might, strength, might mean strength. He wrote as large as he could. Vive la France. Then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall. And without a word, he made a gesture to us with his hand. School is dismissed. You may go. Very, very important. He How he ended his lesson. This is also an important question for an exam. Dear children, this is dealing with how he took his lesson that day. So including that he was patient, he was wearing a special dress, 
then what lesson one by one in same chronology reading writing history same sequence we are going to write and the end he wrote vive la france what does this vive la france means it means long live france so he ended his class with a patriotic and positive note patriotic and positive note vive la france long live france and he wrote why because he couldn't speak why he couldn't speak he was choked he couldn't speak because he was choked into his throat why do we are why we are choked sometimes just because of the what we say when we are when we have we get too much emotional when we get too much emotional then it happens that we get choked into our throat and we couldn't speak similarly the same thing happened with m hamel he couldn't speak he was choked so what he could do he could write as big as he could that's important why as big as he could so that it has the bigger things they have impact the large things have impact so he wrote vive la france long live france this was a positive note also this was showing his love for the country and then he stopped he couldn't speak yes and then he leaned against the wall and without saying a word he made a gesture gesture means an action with his hand saying you may go the class is dismissed so he made a gesture with his hand the class is dismissed you may go very very important last line also so this was the gesture he couldn't he didn't say these words remember school is dismissed he he didn't you may go this he these are uh, though it is written in quotation marks but dear children don't be confused these words he has not spoken these words are actually not spoken he made a gesture the school is dismissed you may go so this line our, our, our lesson is over now today we have completed our lesson but yes there are lot many things to do. dear children i am sharing with you uh these lines with to ponder you may copy and keep it save with you okay number 1 number 2 uh, go to the this blog and can also have it number 2 what i want you to because the lesson is over you may check your understanding through this close exercise so i am sharing with you this close exercise uh, you will get hints also suppose if you get stuck up somewhere you do to tell you anything need a teacher at all you i will show you that if you uh, if you click uh, where is it yeah here do it suppose uh, you get stuck here suppose the first word you don't know when you click it here it shows you the hint a so the answer here is going to start with a the more you click the more you will get the uh, hints okay so you can do it on your own you don't need a teacher for it so but it is very very important for overall understanding of the story and dear children i have made it with made, made it for my students but still you can do one thing uh, reference to context this is very very important uh, dear children just note down and i want you to because uh, you won't be have access to it for long so uh, uh, what i want you to do is note down all the references so that you have uh, all the reference to context with you you know this year onward the cbs cbsc has changed the examination pattern and reference to context context is now very important so it comes in exam so i want you to uh, if you want to attempt it may attempt it but i cannot give you feedback because you are not my student and i don't know you so what you do you simply 
note down all the uh, important lines with the questions and you may later on uh, type it and send it to your teacher and your teacher may check it for you so this are these are three homeworks for you today number you are going to read the explanation these lines to lines and points to ponder then you are going to do this close exercise and number 3 please try to do this reference to context the when you enter your name and class section next 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 plus please don't submit i request you don't submit this form just fill just to check uh, what questions are asked generally suppose if i write a in section a then i move move to next the moment i move to next here is a line and then you have a set of questions multiple choice question and also in some of the uh, like short answer question so instead of uh, you have to complete it but when you will end this uh, uh, what we say this uh, uh, form then there will be one option submit so please don't submit it okay my students means the students of my school can submit it but not you because it is useless for you better you note down all the questions and the Uh, this comprehension sentences and uh, discuss with your teachers so that they may guide you nicely and even yes no problem tomorrow again we are going to have class and then you can discuss with me you can discuss with me if you have any difficulty any any point you have not understood so you can ask me okay and one thing dear tomorrow we are going to learn this new thing which is very very important steel characterization i i i tell you that i even myself i have come across this steel characterization recently and i found it to be great because generally in your exam uh, two questions are very important number one is any of the character sketch and one also justification of title yes one thing more please write the justific justify the title please do the justification of the title the last lesson you know yes the last lesson name is apt Hundred percent apt. How you know how M. Hamill has taken this last lesson nicely? Why was it last lesson? What does it reflect? And everything. So justify the title. That yes, the title was apt. Number two, uh, characterization uh, is very important. So in this chapter, M. Hamill's characterization character is very important. So tomorrow we are going to have the class on steel characterization. by learning this steel characterization you will be able to write not only the character sketch of not only m hamel but any character sketch in any of your chapter easily you can write so tomorrow we are going to do this steel characterization do inform your friends to attend tomorrow's session and tomorrow i think is going to be the last session for the last lesson and day after tomorrow we will start with some other Uh, either with a poem my mother at 66 or with the with the uh, with the uh, story in your supplementary vistas at the third level okay so i will let you know so but uh, tomorrow just inform your friends also to join tomorrow's session because we are going to do something new steel characterization and yes you may also drop your queries your confusions so that i may handle them next tomorrow so that that i may answer you i hope to observe today's class was beneficial to you you have learnt something important thank you to see you tomorrow and please discuss please share it with your friends please share with your friends so that they may also be uh, live uh, they should also attend the live session tomorrow and be benefited from the steel characterization because once you know the steel characterization you can write any character and you are not going to forget even that's important so till tomorrow bye thank you for joining see you tomorrow bye